Hello, 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 my lovelies, and welcome to the tutorial for the marinette dress. I walk you through almost every single step for this tutorial, except for the satin sleeves, um, the eye cord edging, as well as some of the math. If you want to customize this for yourself and you don't want to spend all that brain power doing equations, I've provided a stitch calculator in the description below. This is not tested, but I've built similar stitch calculators for all of my patterns this year. So if you have any suggestions, please email me and I will update the file. There's a lot of places in this video where I say that you can increase in this section in the dress or decrease in this section, but I want to make a disclaimer. All of us have different body types, which means that you may increase or decrease at a different frequency as I do. Uh, you might decrease instead of increase in a certain section, or you might just knit straight. You know your body best, and I can give you suggestions on how to achieve the silhouette for the dress that you desire. That said, <laughs> I've been getting a lot of comments about how short this dress is, which believe me, I know, I've been working on it for nine months, and I like it that way, and it's mine, so what I choose to wear and how I choose to express myself is really no one's business except for mine. If the length of my dress bothers you, then you can make your own and change the length. I used about 700 yards of worsted weight yarn as well as US 8 or 5 millimeter needles. <laughs> and I used the 40, 32, 28, and 16 inch cables to knit in the round. The specific yarn and needles that I used are going to be in the description. I'd suggest making two 4x4 swatches, one for the skirt section and one for the ribbing of the top section. The reason why we're making two swatches is because for the skirt, instead of purling and knitting into every stitch, we slip one stitch in the middle of the purl sections as well as in the middle of the knit sections. So overall, it shrinks the length of the skirt. I did not know this when I was first making it. Don't make my mistake, make a gauge swatch. <laughs> and for the top section, the ribbing will always be a multiple of 10, which is a knit three, purl two, knit three, purl two repeat. That equals about two inches, which is why I kept the repeat like that. So this changes how much stretch you will be given in terms of width. After I started over, I ended up not making two more gauge swatches because I already had two other gauge swatches for the same kind of yarn. But when I saw the difference in the length and the width, I couldn't really make any adjustments at that point because I was running short on time. But I still really like how it turned out, so I'm not really complaining. <laughs> After that, you're going to want to take some measurements. So you'll need the length from the bottom hem of your dress to your waist, the widest part of your hips, your natural waist, the distance between your waist and the widest part of your bust, the widest part of your bust, the width of your straps and their length, which you could also call the armhole depth, your upper arm circumference, and then the length from your upper arm circumference to your wrist. I might have missed something, but I'll just put it here if I forgot. In my original video, I wanted to make sure that my dress was decreasing evenly from the hem, but I didn't want it to be too tight around my abdomen, because let's face it, not all of us are shaped like a perfect trapezoid. <laughs> and I understand that everyone has varying degrees of comfort when it comes to showing their stomach. When I restarted, I didn't end up taking as many measurements, um, so I kind of just hoped that it would all work out. But in the stitch calculator, I do have a function that lets you double check if your stitch count in the round provides enough ease by the time you've knitted up to that area. Oh my gosh, the past eight months were a whole just kidding moment. So in eight months, I cast it on. I was making the ruffles slash pleats. I figured out the length from the widest part of my hips and then the widest part of my hips to my upper hips and then my upper hips to my waist and each row would take about 45 minutes to knit so you can imagine why this took forever um i don't know y'all i finished knitting to the waist i'm gonna try this on and show you because now that i've gotten this far i'm thinking of taking it all apart <laughs> The thing is, I'm, I'm like upset this time because I had all the instructions written out for the script and I, I kind of knew from like two weeks ago that this wasn't going to look like the original um, mock-up. I don't know, I'm gonna post this update to TikTok because I, if I start now, I can finish it in a month. Although it's really not what I want to do, but I'm, I think Okay, let me try it on and then I'll tell you my concerns. Okay, um, here's, I, I think it's different. I think it's unique. I, 
It's not what I had originally planned. Some of my issues are that I know that when I block it, it won't look as like scraggly as this. Like you can see some wrinkles and stuff. Two, I don't know if this is how I wanted it to move. Um, three, the cast on edge where I added these pleats, it, it kind of like, if I hold the dress out, it kind of keeps the bottom hem from really like flaring out. Right now, the cut is very A-line. This is not what I intended. Also, this is unblocked, and I'm imagining that when I do block it, it's going to be longer. On the topic of length, it's this is also pretty heavy. Uh, I don't know the exact number right now. It'll flash on the screen. It, it's supposed to be like cinched to the waist because that's how I decrease things right here, but the thing is, since this is so heavy, I'm afraid that the weight is going to pull the whole dress down and it won't be as fitted as it originally is intended to be. And, um, the back... <gasps> I know it's pleats. I get it. But I'm concerned about it looking bump, like bulky and looking weird when I do anything other than standing, which I'm going to be doing when I the day that I wear this. Also, just, like, I don't know. This just looks strange to me. I, I know it might be fine if I block it, but, um... Okay, there's all my progress. <laughs> so what I did instead, I reverse engineered the entire dress. I knew that this is the sort of pattern that I wanted by the time I reached my waist. So I started with that measurement to figure out how much to cast on. For the skirt, I only really needed four measurements plus the information from my gauge swatch and I used those to calculate how much to cast on, how many times to decrease, the length of the dress, and the stitch count for the waist. So first, find your stitch count for your waist measurement and then round the nearest multiple of 10. You can either round up or down, it doesn't really matter. Multiply this new number by two and that's the amount of stitches you will need to cast on. This will give you a pretty fitted but slightly flared half circle skirt. If you want a three-fourths circle skirt, multiply the multiple of 10 closest to your waist stitch count by three. If you want a full circle skirt, multiply that new multiple of 10 that you have for your waist measurement by four. I haven't actually tested that myself, but based on the math, this is my educated guess. So before getting to the ribbing of the upper section of the dress, I wanted to end up with a seven purl, three knit stitch repeat in the round, which is a 10 stitch repeat. By the time we get to the waist, three of those seven purl stitches would be knitted into to make the tops ribbed section. But for the flare effect, it would start as a section of seven purl stitches, which we will call the gore section of the pleated skirt because it kind of folds in. I don't know if you can see that. I should note that um, accordion, quote unquote, style pleats like this are not very common in knitting because it requires a lot of structure and ironing. <laughs> I didn't know if it would actually work once I blocked it, but it's cute one way or another. So for the gore sections, all of these purl sections here that you can't see when you hold it together, we do not decrease or increase in these sections. These stay seven purl stitches from the hem all the way up to the waist. We will only decrease in the knitted sections, these of which flare outwards. So if we decrease from the hem to the point that we have three knit stitches in one pleat, how many stitches are we supposed to cast on? So basically, because we will always have seven purl stitches in each core section, you're going to multiply this number by the number of pleats in your round. So how would we know what that number is? For example, my stitch count for my waist ended up being 114 stitches, which rounds down to 110. I'm not super concerned about it being too tight on me because it's a knitted piece, it'll stretch out. And then I divided my new waist stitch count by my stitch repeat, which if you don't remember is 10. That gives us 11 pleats total. So if you have 11 pleats and you have seven purl stitches in each of those pleats, seven times 11 equals 77. You have a total of 77 purl stitches in the round. As a reminder, this number is a constant because we don't increase or decrease any stitches in this section. Next, subtract the number of stitches from your gore section from the total number of cast-on stitches to find out how many stitches you knit. For me, 
110 times 2 equals 220. Remember that we're multiplying by 2 because we're getting a half circle skirt. Minus 77 purl stitches equals 143. Again, divide this new number by the number of pleats in your round, so 143 divided by 11 is 13. You will have a total of 143 knit stitches in the round, and per pleat, you will start with 13 knitted stitches. You also need to find out how often you decrease for the skirt of the dress. The math is all done for you in the stitch calculator, and this technique is something I'll go over in more detail when I finish the tutorial for these pants. But all you'll need to know is how many stitches you cast on, how many stitches you'll have for your waist measurement, how many stitches you want to decrease per round, and how long you want your dress to be from the bottom hem to your waist. So first, subtract your stitches for your waist from the stitches for your cast on edge. This will be the number of stitches that you need to decrease. So for me, 220 stitches cast on minus 110 stitches for my waist count equals 110. In this case, I decreased twice per pleat, once on either side of the middle stitch. So I have 11 pleats in my round, which means that 11 times 2, I decreased 22 times per one decrease row. Divide the number of stitches you need to decrease by the amount of times you decrease in one row. So I need to decrease 110 stitches divided by 22 stitches that you decrease per row equals five. So I will make seven decrease rows over the distance from my bottom hem to my waist. So how do you distribute these decrease rows evenly? How many rows do you knit before you make a decrease? To find out how long your dress will be, multiply your desired length by your gauge swatches height in rows, and then divide that number by your gauge swatches height in inches. Um, in my case, the resulting number is 77 rows. Divide your total rows for skirt length by decrease rows to find out how many rows you work before making a decrease row. So for me, I need to make 77 rows for this skirt divided by five decrease rows, which equals 15.4. So in other words, you will knit 14.4 rows, and then in the next row, you will knit a decrease row. Because this comes out to a decimal, you can round this number down, or when you're actually knitting, you can knit 14 rows, then decrease, then for the next section, you can knit 15 rows, then decrease. In my opinion, it doesn't really make a huge difference, but if you care that much about accuracy, that is an option that's open to you. I typically just add the remaining rows to be knitted evenly, in the last section before my decrease. Like I said earlier, in the first prototype of this pattern, I wanted to make sure that the skirt wasn't too fitted around my stomach after I blocked it. I double checked my stitch count and the skirt should flare enough that it still flares from my waist rather than from my abdomen. But if you want your skirt to have a different fit, you can do this process twice. Once using the stitch count from your hem to your stomach and then from your stomach to your waist. So as you can see, I've already made almost the total length of my dress's skirt, but I'll show you how to knit the two different kinds of rows that we're going to be doing, one which is the regular row and one which is a decrease row. So for your very first row after you cast on, you're going to want to slip the stitch in the middle of each knit and purl section. Supposedly, this changes the tension a little bit, so then the pleats can pop out a little bit more. At the time, I didn't know if that would actually work until I blocked it. So knit into each knit stitch. When you get to the middle of a knit section, slip that middle stitch purlwise, and then knit the rest of the section. I had some trouble with the tension for this transition right here from the knit stitches to the purl stitches, so I knitted the last stitch at the very edge of my needle, and purled into the first purl stitch also at the very tip of my needle. I purled the next stitch a little more loosely so then both of these stitches could slide down my needle and then I readjusted my tension. So I've purled two stitches, I'll purl one more, and then we're at the middle of our purl section. So slip the next purl stitch purlwise and then purl the rest of your section. Let's do that again. Remember that for each row that you slip stitch, make sure that the stitches you slip are right above the stitches that you slipped into last time. Even if it doesn't actually turn out to be functional, it'll make a nice line down your skirt.
So for every other row, you're not going to slip the middle stitch. You will simply knit into each knit stitch and purl into each purl stitch. So basically, you alternate regular and slip stitch rows. You also need to knit decrease rows every once in a while. So knit until you are two stitches away from the middle stitch. Slip slip knit for a left leaning decrease. Depending on what row you're on, you may need to slip your middle stitch, so just make sure that you're keeping track. In this case, I didn't have to, so I knitted the middle stitch, and then I knitted two together to make a right-leaning decrease. This gives the pleat a nice tapered look. Now repeat this for all of the pleats in this row. Like I had mentioned earlier, purl into all the gore sections without decreasing or increasing. We'll work on those when we reach the waist. So I want to turn these gore sections into a nice ribbing, but I want to do so in sort of a tapered V shape per gore section. When I have about 10 rows remaining in my skirt section, I will purl all the stitches in my gore sections except for one. The middle stitch of this gore section will be knitted into, and once you start knitting into this gore section, you will no longer need to slip the middle stitch. For the next two rows, knit into that same stitch so you'll have three rows with one knitted column in the middle. Then for the next row, you will start knitting into the purl stitches at the right and the left of this knitted column. And you'll start knitting into the middle stitch of the gore sections on either side of this section. So to reiterate, for every three rows, you will knit into the purl stitches on either side of the middle stitch to create this V-shape. And as soon as you start knitting into those three stitches, you repeat this process and you start knitting into two new gore sections on either side. So once you reach slightly above your waist, knit into any remaining gore sections that you haven't worked. Okay, so I've already done like several rows of the waist to the bust but um, I completely forgot to film all the increases. So I'm just gonna show you the basic steps on how I did it. So you're just going to do the same shaping technique that we use to evenly decrease the skirt from wide to narrow. Now we're going to increase instead from narrow to wide. You're going to increase in four pearl gores. This can really be anywhere, but I chose for the front at least the two gores that were closest to the um, knit ribs that were basically my princess seams. This isn't necessary, but if I hold my dress up to myself, they kind of line up to my shoulders and I like that. I might make these two princess uh, knitted ribs like the straps if they're wide enough. And if you're looking at the front of your work, you're going to place your left-leaning purl increase to the left of this strap and your right-leaning purl increase to the right of this strap. Over here, I reached five stitches across and then I decided, you know what, I don't want this just this to be like another gore with all pearls. So I started doing the same like uh, knit uh, ribbing effect so then it just looks a little bit more cohesive and then I matched that with the other side and I actually think when I try it on it's gonna look kind of cool it's gonna have this little brioche effect and I don't know anything about brioche but maybe that's something I'll pick up someday and then all stitches all these stitches in between the increase must be the same number and then for the back I just decided to do a right lifted increase purled um, on for everything from here to this side of the purl columns to this stitch marker which is like the side seam and then a left lifted increase purled from this stitch marker to everything on this stitch marker which would basically form the back. You'll notice that I have two extra stitch markers at the halfway point of all my stitches in the round. Um, this is 
basically just to help mark off where I'm going to shape my armholes in a few rows. So to keep track of how much yarn I used, I wrote it, hang, hang on, I wrote it all down and then if you look here, all these tally marks are how many rows I made and then all the like squiggly lines or X's is where I increased or decreased accordingly. But for some reason, I'm almost at the bust line and I I, I don't know where I made a mistake. Um, I mentioned that I was increasing at two points in the front, two points in the back, right? Um, for the front, it's always going to be right here and right here for the back. I spread those increases out evenly and then I was going to go back and start increasing from the middle outwards again. But for some reason, I was supposed to have three increases for the last row, two in the front, and then I just place one in the middle um, knit-wise over here. But for some reason, I only have one increase to make, and I check my stitch count, and it's correct. So this is just a reminder that even though you might have a calculator, you might have something automating everything for you, it's so important to just go back and keep counting and checking and double-checking because it will be worth it. Like, I know that even though it didn't work out quite the way that I wanted it to, the math is all correct. I tried it on and so far it fits me. So I will say though, it's very short. <laughs> but I'm sure that um, even though I didn't gauge swatch for uh, slipping my stitches here, it'll all be like compensated for once I block it. I might have to hang it while it's wet. I know it's like a cardinal sin, but I will, I will take what measures I need to take. I'm, I'm kind of excited. Like, I'm looking at it so far. I know it looks super tiny, but... <gasps> oh my gosh! <laughs> I know it looks super tiny and super stiff, but... I saved so much yarn redoing it, and I'm really glad I restarted. So when it's time to work on shaping the armhole, if it says that you need to make negative three rows, you need to start lol you need to start working on the armhole three rows before you reach your bust measurement i think that's how the math is working out but honestly i'm probably not going to do that um because i'm going with my gut here from the bust to my like arm sky uh, arm side uh, arm uh, Huh? The arm side is not aligned with my bust line, so I'm gonna add maybe an extra inch, but if if not, it's fine. It'll work out with the length, so fingers crossed. So once you reach the widest part of your bust, you may want to start shaping the armhole now, or you might want a smaller armhole that's more fitted to your arm. In the case of the latter, continue to shape your dress by increasing or decreasing from your bust to your upper bust measurement. Um, future me kind of regretted this, but the dress still fits extremely well, so not exactly a complaint either. <laughs> so we're going to start shaping the armhole for the back. So slip half your stitches in the round onto a different cord so you can focus on one side of the dress. We're going to start shaping this to support set in sleeves. You'll need to know how many rows your armhole depth is. For me, that's 7 inches, which is 39 rows. Then you'll want to know the number of stitches for your cross back, aka the number of stitches from one strap across to the other. Now remember how I mentioned I wanted to increase at the front following my princess seams, and all of the stitches in between would be my neckline slash my straps? So I'm going to count how many stitches that is, and I will use the same number of stitches to shape the back. For me, that's 33 stitches. For the back, it doesn't really matter to me if the shaping follows the ribbing or not. I just want to shape it. <laughs> Subtract your cross back stitches from the number of stitches on your needle right now, which should be half of your upper bust measurement. For me, that was 64, so 64 minus 33 equals 31. We can round if it's an odd number, but I didn't, and I'll tell you why in a second. You're going to bind off a fourth of this number for the next two rows, and decrease the rest evenly on either side. So 31 divided by 2 equals 15.5. You'll shape 15 stitches on one side, 16 on the other. 
I want my number of decrease stitches to be the same, so I'm going to bind off 7 on one side and 8 on the other. If you do this, keep in mind how many stitches you decreased for each side. When you work the front, you want to bind off so your total decrease stitches for the underarm on both sides is the amount of stitches that you needed to decrease. For me, that would be 31 stitches. After you get this result, half of this number of stitches will be decreased on either side. So 15 divided by 2 is 7.5, I'm going to round to 8, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. Now decrease at the beginning and end of every other row for the remaining stitches to create a gradual curve of the underarm. And then after that, work evenly for the remaining rows. Now, my notes for this section. I would make my straps wider. You can like barely see my straps right now. It's here. <laughs> and I would also set them closer together um, and also raise the hemline for the back. My neck tends to get really irritated if I'm wearing something that rubs up against the back of my neck, so I think I was trying to avoid that by having a sort of lower hemline for the back. But in doing so, the straps and the sleeves are really the only thing holding onto my body and supporting the dress. Um, besides that, it wore pretty well. Now we're going to shape the armholes and the neckline for the front. So place a stitch marker in the middle of your stitches. This will mark the lowest point of your v-neck. You're going to shape your armholes in the same manner as the back, so bind off whatever number you need to if you have an odd number. Just make sure that you bind off accordingly. And then decrease every other row until you've completed the amount of stitches you need to decrease. So for shaping the neckline, you're going to knit across until you reach three stitches before your stitch marker. Knit two together and then knit one. Then you're going to drop that yarn. Slip your stitch marker and get a second ball of yarn, attaching it by knitting it into the first unworked space. Slip slip knit to decrease and then knit to the end of the row. For the second row, you're going to bind off as usual for the armhole and knit across, dropping the yarn before you get to the center stitch marker so you can shape your neck. For the third row, decrease at the armholes and the neck. Basically, you're going to decrease on every right side row. You can change how often you decrease depending on how deep you want your neckline. When I finished shaping my armhole, I continued to decrease until I had three stitches left for each strap, and I knit evenly for the rest of my strap rows. Like I said in the previous section, I would probably make my straps a little bit wider next time, but lesson learned. Okay, so I made sudden sleeves for this dress. However, this is the first time I've ever made sudden sleeves, and I am not confident at all in my skills of explaining how I did this. I did follow some YouTube videos as well as some blog instructions. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to measure your upper arm circumference and then pick up that amount of stitches around your armhole regardless of how many stitches your armhole basically has. Then you're going to um, find where your bind off ended on each side and then you're going to from the center pick up the same amount of stitches to the end of each bind off and then make sure that uh, you have the same amount of stitches on the back side and the front side then for the top here you want to take all the stitches in the round with the exception of the underarm stitches and divide that by three so then you have three even sections. You're going to knit around once and then you're going to start knitting German short rows by knitting to the third stitch marker, working your short row, working back to the second stitch marker, working a short row, working back this way knitting or purling into your short row depending on your pattern. I tried to follow the um, the knit three purl two pattern as closely as possible and working into another stitch after you worked the short row, making that stitch your next short row, continuing. Yeah, 
I, th I think that's basically how I did it. I also wrote a much more detailed explanation of how I worked my sleeve cap in a stitch calculator. Here's what it looks like so far. It could really do with some blocking, um, but it fits really nicely, except I think I need to do just a um, slip stitch chain around the um, the neckline because this would not be doing whatever it's doing. I also wanted to talk through what I did for the arm here. After working to the circumference of my upper arm, then I calculated how long I wanted the sleeve to be and then I calculated the circumference of my wrist and then did the math on how many decreases I would need from upper arm circumference to my wrist. Um, as you can see, there is a little flare here. I decreased only up to the middle of my forearm and then I did two, row two increase rows um, to make it flare out a little bit just because I think it's kind of cute like that. Yeah, I have four days until I need to wear this in public. Um, it's gonna happen. <laughs> in addition to completing this dress, I also have, you could probably see it back there. I don't need to take it off the hanger. I also have to make a set of fairy wings. Um, if you want that tutorial, right up there or there. I don't know if this is a reflected video, but <laughs> I'm done! So I think what I'm gonna do is make an applied eye cord border around the edge. I don't know how to do that so I will not be including this in this tutorial. Um, but I will link the tutorial I, I used below. Wish me luck. I'm trying to get this done in 30 minutes because I want to sleep early tonight. So. so after this I crocheted an eye cord edging around the neckline be mostly because I didn't feel like knitting it. I washed, blocked, and dried the dress. If you look at this picture, I took out some foam edgings and inserted them underneath the pleats of the skirt to make it a little bit more prominent. I made a chain and added pom-poms and then wove it into the neckline. And I finished crocheting the fairy wings. Or I tried to. I didn't end up filling out the veins of the wings and I have not returned to it, but I figured I'd at least make them pink. All of which... I didn't film because it was already 2 in the morning and I just wanted to dissociate while I crafted and watched One Piece. But here is the final look. I think I underestimated that the neckline would be more of a scoop neck because I opted for narrower spaghetti straps rather than actual straps. And I didn't realize that the slip stitches of the skirt would change the lengthwise gauge of my piece, so I would probably make it a little bit longer next time. And I woke up about six hours later to meet up with my best friend from middle school, and we went to Anime NYC together. Um, this was my first con, and I had a lot of fun looking at and shopping for art. Some photographers came up to us, and we got these awesome pictures, and it was just mind-blowing to see how talented and beautiful people looked. It was an awesome time. Um, I thought it was really sweet that my first project I started this year was completed as my capstone project for my shop's fifth birthday and served as my first cosplay that I ever wore in public. All in all, I spent nine months knitting this uh, and who knows how many hours, <laughs> but this definitely won't take as long to remake because I have provided the stitch calculator I made based off of my process. That way you can customize it to the measurements that you desire. It should technically also be able to tell you how much yarn you need, but the function needs a lot of inputs, so I'd buy at least two more skeins than it recommends. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Thank you for watching and for celebrating my shop's fifth birthday with me. Whether you are a longtime subscriber or new to my channel, thank you for joining me on this extreme journey with this project. And I will see you all in the next tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, kindly hit the like and subscribe button to join the stitches in our seams, and I will be seeing you next time. Bye!